Hi everyone, I'm Tony. Today, I'll be presenting the paper, They, Them, Theirs, Rewriting with Gender Neutral English. This work wouldn't have been possible without my amazing mentors. And this includes Kelly Webster, Apu Shah, William Wang, and Melvin Johnson. Most people identify with the pronouns he, him, his, or she, her, hers. Recently, however, there has been an increasing number of people who identify with a non-binary gender and instead prefer the singular pronouns they, them, theirs. Some people also may prefer not to share their gender, just as they may prefer not to share their race or their sexuality. So to define the scope of the problem, they want to rewrite gendered sentences in English to be gender neutral using the singular they. And in particular, we want to focus on sentences with a single gendered entity, because you can imagine that a sentence with multiple entities and genders can have an ambiguous output. So to give an example of a sentence that we would want to focus on, we can say, he finds his way to a bar stool and orders a drink. And the goal here is to rewrite the sentence to this gender neutral variant. They find their way to a bar stool and order a drink. For this problem, there are some significant challenges and hurdles to overcome. Our first idea was to use a simple rule-based method, but this has difficulty dealing with words with one-to-many mappings, such as his, her, she's, he's. There's also some difficulty identifying and rewriting relevant verbs while keeping the verbs that correspond to non-gendered subjects the same. On the, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we could also train a sequence of sequence model. But a question here is, uh, how do we mine parallel sentences that are clean and of high quality, since there isn't really a data set for this task? Another tough question is, how do we evaluate performance if we have multiple models and we want to compare between them? For our approach, we chose to train a sequence to sequence model, but we aim to avoid annotating data for training, which can be expensive. To this end, we started with an initial data set from Wikipedia of 100 million sentences. Of these 100 million sentences, we filtered them and found that 15 million of them are gendered. Then we ran an algorithm on these 15 million gendered sentences to produce target data and create our parallel data set, where we have gendered sentences from Wikipedia on the source side and gender neutral sentences from our algorithm on the target side. And with this, we can train our model. And so really a key part of this is the rewriting algorithm. And I'll walk through the three main components the regular expressions, a dependency parser, and a language model. And I'll go through this using an example. So say that the input sentence is, does she know what happened to her friend? The first step is to use regular expressions. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're going to find and replace certain words uh, regardless of the context. So in this case, we're always going to re replace the word she with the word they. And this is pretty straightforward. And the next step is to use the dependency parser to identify and rewrite verbs. So in the same sentence, the verb is does know. And we can find this by using a dependency parse tree, where we find that the subject is she, and the words uh, corresponding to she are does and no. And we can rewrite this to be do know. And the tricky part here is that if there are other verbs, and these verbs correspond to non-gendered subjects, then we want to keep these verbs the same. And finally, our last step is to use a language model. Uh, and in the sentence, uh, you know, we want to rewrite the word her. Her is tricky because it can be rewritten as either their or them, depending on the context. Uh, and for our language model, we're going to generate both options. And we're going to choose a sentence with a lower perplexity. So for instance, we have, do they know what happened to their friend versus do they know what happened to them friend? And here option A has a lower perplexity and we're going to choose that option. And so we rewrite the word her uh, to be there. And putting all these steps together, uh, we transform the gender sentence, does she know what happened to her friend? To the gender neutral sentence, do they know what happened to their friend? And with this parallel data set, we can train a sequence to sequence model. As a heads up, uh, the algorithm is not perfect. There can be underlying mistakes in the dependency parser and or language model, uh, which can contribute to errors. The advantage of training a model um, is that first it can generalize uh, beyond individual components of gender neutral language, uh, especially if it can pick up concepts like grammar and sentence syntax along the way. It also doesn't hurt that we are replacing multiple steps with one step. 
So for training, uh, we train a standard transformer model with six encoders and six decoders. We also find that data augmentation by adding non-gendered and gendered inflected sentences uh, helps improve performance. Okay, and so with this, uh, for evaluation, um, you know, for both the algorithm and the model, uh, we have an out-of-domain test set where we have 500 annotated sentence pairs from five domains, uh, Twitter, Reddit, news articles, movie quotes, and jokes. We also ensure that each domain is gender balanced uh, so that a rewriter can't have impressive performance by performing really well on one gender and not the other. And so for our results, uh, we use two metrics, blue, which we want to maximize, and word error rate, which we want to minimize. It's important to recognize that uh, these scores are going to be a little bit inflated because uh, for each sentence, most of the words are going to be unchanged and we're focused on changing a few keywords. So the identity function already has a pretty decent blue score and word error rate, uh, but we can do much better. So both the algorithm and the model are able to achieve over 99 blue and less than 1% word error rate. The algorithm uh, you know, performs slightly better uh, than the model. But if we look at the, the distribution of mistakes uh, that the algorithm makes compared to the model, the model actually makes less mistakes uh, related to pronouns and verbs. And in the cases where the model does make a mistake, many of these mistakes are dealing with symbols and emojis and white spaces. And to demonstrate what I mean, I'll go through three examples comparing the algorithm to the model. So the first example is one from earlier. Uh, does she know what happened to her friend? And both the algorithm and the model gets it correctly. The second sentence is, she sings in the shower and dances in the dark. Uh, the algorithm uh, you know, misses a second verb, dances, but the model uh, rewrites the sentence perfectly. And in this last example, uh, Manchester United boss admits failure to make top four could cost him his job, and it's a Twitter link, um, the algorithm gets it correctly and rewrites him and his to be them and their, and so does the model. Uh, and it's a little bit hard to see here, but uh, the model uh, misses or removes, incorrectly removes a white space. Um, and this is likely due to, uh, you know, a distribution shift uh, where the model is being trained on uh, Wikipedia data, but it's being evaluated to some degree on data from Twitter. And these mistakes are general to sequence to sequence models. Uh, which have difficulty being robust uh, to these kinds of sentences. Rewriting gendered sentences to be gender neutral has applications in multiple domains. For instance, in machine translation, when translating from a language with gender neutral pronouns, such as Turkish to English, some machine translation systems, such as Google Translate, will provide both a masculine and feminine translation. In these situations, providing a gender neutral translation is also a very fitting option, such as they are a doctor. Another concrete example is in job listings, where companies can rewrite their job listings to be gender neutral rather than being targeted towards a specific gender. So to wrap things up today, uh, we talked about promoting gender inclusive research, where we introduced a new task of rewriting gendered sentences to be gender neutral. We showed some promising results uh, where we achieved over 99 blue and less than 1% error, uh, word error rate for both the algorithm and the model, uh, where we avoided annotating data for training. We also show some interesting applications in domains such as machine translation and text editing. Finally, we want to note that English is just a start. Other morphologically rich languages such as Spanish and Chinese provide their own unique challenges. And we're really excited to see future work tackle this problem. Okay, that does it.